Good morning students. Today's lecture is on demography and vital statistics. At the end of this session, students should be able to define demography, explain demographic transition over the years, explain about population growth, describe vital statistics, list and define common indicators used as vital statistics. What is demography? Demography is the scientific study of human population. It focuses its attention on three readily observable human phenomena. Changes in population size, the composition of the population, and the distribution of population in space. Changes in population size means can be population growth or decline of population. Composition of the population in terms of age, gender and the socio-demographic variables. Distribution of population in space. Demography deals with five demographic processes. What are they? These five demographic processes are fertility, mortality, marriage, migration, and social mobility. So fertility can affect population growth. Mortality can affect population growth. Marriage can affect population growth. Migration. Migration can be emigration or immigration. Immigration means going out of the country. Immigration means like immigrant workers coming to our country. Social mobility, moving from one city to another based on the social condition and industrial industries and business availability, better quality of life in some cities compared to another. International migration can also affect the population. Okay, these are the demographic processes. Demographic processes are continuously at work within a population and it determines size of population. As all of us know, if fertility is higher, population grows. If mortality is higher, population declines. Okay. Migration also can affect the population. If so many people are immigrating out of the country, so population declines. So many people are immigrating to the country. Uh, immigrant laborers, laborers are coming to the country. So population increase like that. It can affect size of population, composition of population, distribution of population. Some cities will have more immigrant workers or more industries are there. So population will be higher. Population density will be higher in that area. We will see what is population density in coming slides. Demography can be divided into study of structure of population or dynamism of population. Structure of population is studied at a point of time. Dynamism is studied for a period of time. Structure of population include status of population based on age, sex, education level, income, family, urbanization, public utilities, ethnicity and all. It's a structure of population based on all these parameters. Dynamism of population. Okay, that how the population changes. Okay, during a period of time. That includes vital statistics, births or natality. Births can lead to population growth. 
fertility can lead to population growth deaths or mortality can lead to population decline the reproduction can lead to population growth marital status also can influence population growth okay migration like immigration people are going out of the country immigration people are coming to this country communities are travelers from one country to another okay these all can affect the dynamism of population demography studies structure of population and the dynamism of population facts about demography population growth depends on two factors births and immigration births and immigration lead to population increase deaths and emigration lead to decrease in population that's the main thing very easy to remember important indicators of birth or fertility are crude birth rate and the fertility rate number of births okay per population per year that's a crude birth rate okay fertility rate is a related to fertility of population that we will discuss later demography encompasses the study of size structure and the distribution of population and the spatial changes in population that's dynamism okay structure of population distribution of population and the spatial changes or so dynamism in response to time birth migration aging and death the term demographic transition that means there is change in the population over the years during the first half of the 20th century demographers conceived the notion of demographic transition Demographic transition illustrates population growth in terms of discrepancies and changes in two crude vital rates like mortality and fertility. Okay, ignores migration. Hmm? There is a population uh, change in population based on mortality and fertility. Different countries show different population growth. demographic transition illustrates population growth in terms of changes in mortality and fertility this is a phenomenon and a theory which refers to the historical shift from high birth rate and high death rate in society with a minimal technology minimal education especially of women and minimal economic development to low birth rate and low death rate earlier it was high birth rate and high death rate okay that was in the uh, when technology education and economic development was less now it is low birth rate and low death rate in societies with advanced technology education and economic development so some countries show the transition between high birth rate high death rate to low birth rate low death rate okay so it can be plotted different countries show different type of demographic demographic transition model is a graph that represents population change over time okay so there are different stages high stationary early expanding late expanding low stationary and a declining phase high stationary phase means we can understand high stationary birth rate is also very high death rate is also very high okay so population remains stationary so high birth rate high death rate but population is stationary that is high stationary early expanding means 
population is expanding that's why yearly expanding right okay birth rate remains high but death rate came down okay birth rate remains high but death rate came down so population grows okay understood so high stationary phase which country shows that you know Burkina Faso and the chart these are the underdeveloped countries from Africa they show high stationary phase birth rate is very high death rate is also very high so population remains stationary no growth second phase Bolivia Nigeria and India birth rate is still very high but death rate is coming down so it is known as yearly expanding phase so population is expanding very rapid increase in population okay next phase is late expanding there what is the difference you know death rate already came down now birth rate is falling okay now birth rate is falling death rate is also falling so population is still increasing because birth rate is higher than death rate so population is still increasing so Argentina and China are in late expanding phase stage 3 then comes low stationary what is that birth rate is also low death rate also low both are almost same level birth rate is also low death rate is also low both are at the same level so that population growth remains stationary that is known as low stationary why it is low stationary birth rate is low death rate is low and the population is stationary that is known as stage 4 USA and UK are in that phase okay now the last phase very interesting it's known as declining phase declining phase means what the threat is low birth rate is low but birth rate is lower than the threat so population is going down slow decreases there Japan and Sudan are in that phase okay you understood demographic transition now now world population growth world population growth is an unprecedented population growth of modern times heightens the interest in the notion of population doubling time so population growth is predicted based on a based on a law of 70 there is a law of 70 based on that world population is projected okay calculation of population doubling time is facilitated by law of 70 if a population is growing at a constant rate of 1% per year okay it can be expected to double the population approximately every 70 years if the population growth rate is at 1% per year population doubles at the age of every 70 years if the rate of growth is 2% then population doubling time is 35 years that is 70 divided by 2 that is 35 years T.R. Malthus he was the first person to draw widespread attention to the two components of natural increase of population like birth and deaths like fertility and mortality okay he found out that these two can affect the population population explosion it is contrary to Malthus prediction world population growth 
was in an exponential uh, rate. Okay. World population was less than 1 billion in 1800 but became 6 billion by the end of the 20th century. Okay. Why it happened? Why Malthus was unable to foresee the population explosion? Population explosion is uh, mentioned as population bomb in uh, in some books at some level. Population growth is the increase in number of individuals in a population. Global human population growth amounts to around 83 million annually or 1.1 percent per year for every year you see 83 million is the increase okay the global population has grown from less than 1 billion in 1800 to 7.616 billion in 2018 okay it is expected to grow keep growing and the estimates have put the total population at 8.6 billion by mid 2030 to 9.8 billion by mid 2050 and 11.2 billion by 2100 that's a projection made okay around 83 million annually it is increasing okay so this uh, world population growth is shown as a diagram so it shows that um, in 1800 uh, it was less than 1 billion and it reached around 7 billion in 2018 okay so it's showing the projection population growth if if we are going through the different countries okay china is the most populated country in the world in the next 50 years india will have more people than china Asia has over one third of the Earth's population. Okay, now we will go through the factors that influence population growth and the factors which may have resulted in population explosion. Okay, earlier slide we were uh, we were telling about population explosion. The major factors which may have led to population explosion are advances in modern medicine and hygiene okay advances in modern medicine um, development of new antibiotics antiviral drugs and uh, various hygienic measures all this reduced the death rate okay education or literacy also influences population okay especially female literacy rate it is having an inverse relation those countries where education level is higher, female literacy is higher, population growth is lower. Okay. Industrialization and urbanization affects population growth. Economic development affects population. Government policies on family planning. Some countries are very strict on family planning policies their population growth is controlled. Some countries are lenient on family planning, their population growth is higher. The role of women in society, like gender equality. Those countries where gender equality is there, the population growth is controlled. Population growth is not in an exponential rate. So now we will go to the go through the next concept population density. Population density is the number of people occupying an area of land, number of people who live per square kilometer. Okay, it's the population density.
we are going through the population and the population area and the population density of different states in Malaysia. It shows that federal territory of Kuala Lumpur is having a population of 1.6 million according to the census of 2010 1.6 million is the population okay and the area in kilometer is only 243 kilometer square area federal territory of Kuala Lumpur so we can calculate that 6891 people stay per one square kilometer area so the population density is 6891 that is very high in federal territory of Kuala Lumpur the next is Penang Penang also having 1.5 million population and the area is 1048 square kilometer so population density is around 1500 people are living per square kilometer now we will see how the population density in Perak Perak state is having 2.2 million 2.2 million population per 21,035 square kilometer area so population density is 110 people per square kilometer okay so now you understood uh, what is population density number of people occupying a unit area unit area will be square kilometer okay mid-year population mid-year population is the estimate of resident population on 1st July of a given calendar year okay that's known as mid-year population if you are going through literature journal article and books they will mention about mid-year population of 2015 like that so the mid-year population of 2015 is calculated by taking end year estimate of 2014 and end year estimate of 2015 and take average of it so how it is calculated it is calculated as an average of successive end year estimates if you want to calculate 2019 mid-year population you take end year population of 2018 end year population of 2019 and take average of that okay that's one easier way to calculate next is about the concept of population pyramid or age sex pyramid okay age sex pyramid or population pyramid is used to demonstrate the demographic structure of the society or population so it is having an x-axis and a y-axis x-axis shows the number of women and men towards both sides from the center okay y-axis shows age group of individuals in categories okay age and number of females are traditionally plotted on the right side and age and the number of females uh, males are plotted on the left side of the population pyramid now we will see how it is okay it shows malicious population pyramid or age six pyramid for the year 2020 <coughs> x-axis shows the number of people okay on the right side of the graph shows number of people who are females left side of the graph shows number of female, number of males number of uh, people who are males okay and the y axis shows different age categories okay i will show you one more age sex pyramid or 
population pyramid which is more clear to understand. It is a Malaysia population pyramid for the year 2015. Okay. It also shows, uh, x-axis shows number of people. The right side of the graph shows number of people who are females. Left side of the graph shows number of people who are males. And the y-axis shows different age category. In this graph, the age category, the interval is every four year, every five years. Zero to four year, five to nine, ten to fourteen, like that. Okay, clear? So by looking at the population pyramid or age six pyramid, we can know which age group is more and uh, which gender is more. Okay. This is the age sex pyramid or population pyramid of Malaysia in 2015 for different ethnic groups. By looking at this, we can say which age group is more. Okay. For Bumiputra or Malay population, it is uh, seeing that, showing that younger generation is more, 0 to 4 uh, up to 20 to 24. The population size is more for Bhumiputra. Then it is tapering towards the top. Okay. Adult population is uh, some more le uh, lo lower. Then elderly population is lower. Among Chinese population, number of children are lower. Number of adult population. Maybe if you take 15 to 19 to 35 to 39 more number of people are there in that age group. Each sex pyramid of or population pyramid of Indian also shows number of children are lower than Bhumiputra, but adult population is higher. So 10 to 14 to 30 to 34 population is higher. So as years advances, population pyramid will change the shape as more and more elderly people will be there as years advance. Okay. By looking at the age sex pyramid or population pyramid, we can we can link with the demographic transition of the country. Those countries where the, those countries in expanding phase, stage one, huh? expanding phase. The population pyramid shows a pattern that younger generation will be more than the older generation. Okay, stage two expanding, uh, slowly younger generation will become less number and for adult and older generation will start growing. Okay. In stage 3 stationary phase, growing older population. And the stage 4 contracting phase, so it's a decreasing population. It's a declining phase. Okay. So elderly population will be more than the younger population. Okay. Now we can go through the age sex pyramid trend of Malaysia over the years. In 1970, the population is like that. Younger generation was more than compared to the older generation. In 2000, younger generation, older generation started growing. Okay, more number of people in adult and above 40 year age group. And in 2010, elder population was more increasing compared to 2000. So government has to look at the graphical representation of each sex pyramid and consider more services for the geriatric problems and the geriatric care services. So that's one use of age sex pyramid. We can understand the population, which 
population subgroup need more more attention and more focus that we can understand by looking at the age experiment now we will go through the next session on vital statistics vital statistics is the accumulated data gathered on live births deaths fetal deaths marriages and divorces so these are the vital events in the community or population what are the vital events live births deaths fetal deaths marriage and divorces so vital statistics focus on vital events most common way of collecting information on these vital events is through registration of vital events okay there is an administrative system used by governments to record vital events which occur in their population so birth is registered death is registered fetal death is registered marriage is registered so by going through the registration of vital events records or a registration of vital events website we can um, we can get an idea about vital statistics common indicators used in vital statistics there are common in we will go through the common indicators one is crude birth rate crude birth rate is the annual number of live births per thousand population okay it's a crude rate annual total number of live births divided by thousand people thousand population divided by total number of population multiplied by thousand that will give you number of births per thousand population next is general fertility rate okay general fertility rate means annual number of live births per thousand women of child bearing age group so total number of live births divided by total number of women of child bearing age group that is often taken from 15 to 49 years of age but some countries take as 15 to 44 also so annual number of live births per thousand women of child bearing age group how you will calculate total number of live births divided by total number of women of child bearing age group multiplied by 1000 that will give you general fertility rate each specific fertility rate how you can calculate each specific fertility rate annual number of live births per thousand women in particular age group so can be 15 to 19 20 to 24 25 to 29 like that you take all the women in that age group okay then total number of live births from that age group divided by total number of women in that age group multiplied by 1000 that will give you age specific fertility rates crude death rate crude death rate is the annual number of deaths per 1000 population so we have to take total number of deaths divided by total number of population multiplied by 1000 that will give you crude death rate infant mortality rate how it is calculated annual number of deaths of children less than 1 year infant means child less than 1 year annual number of deaths of children less than 1 year per 1000 live births how you will calculate total number of infant deaths divided by total live births multiplied by 1000 that will give you infant mortality rate now we can see what is expectation of life or life expectancy you may have seen uh, some countries have life expectancy very high if you take japan 
it's a life expectancy is more than 85 years malaysia's life expectancy is 74 to 75 years okay so number of years which an individual at a given age could expect to live at present level of mortality rates that is known as expectation of life or life expectancy now we will go through some fertility rates huh? total fertility rate what is total fertility rate number of live births per woman completing her reproductive life okay so reproductive age is 15 to 49 years at the end of 49 years number of live births how many live births the woman has if her child bearing at each age reflect current age specific fertility rate okay so that's a one uh, one calculation is the total fertility rate total number of live births a woman who completes her reproductive life at the age of 49 years total number of live births per woman if her child bearing at each age reflected current age specific fertility rate age specific fertility rate for 15 to 19 will be like that uh, 22 to uh, 24 will be like that 25 to 29 will be like that this woman women should follow the age specific fertility rate of the country okay current age specific fertility rate they should follow if they are following at the end of reproductive age group how many children how many live births she will give birth to here he will uh, he will give uh, birth to how many children okay that's a total fertility rate then two uh, two vital statistics figures are indicators are gross reproduction rate and net reproduction rate gross reproduction rate is the number of daughters who would be born to a woman completing her reproductive life at a current age specific fertility rate number of daughters earlier total fertility rate means number of children a woman will have when he complete her reproductive life okay gross reproduction rate means number of daughters okay who would be born to a woman completing her reproductive life at a current age specific fertility rate okay net reproduction rate means okay is the expected number of daughters per newborn prospective mother when a when a newborn girl is born okay according to the according to the fertility rate of the country and according to the mortality rate of the country how many number of women child or how many number of female child or daughters will be born to the currently born newly born prospective mother who may or may not survive to go through the ages of child bearing so that's a net reproduction ratio so by looking at total fertility rate we can we can know how much is the fertility rate of the country okay our total number of live births per women when she completes her reproductive life okay if she follows age specific fertility rate gross reproduction rate means how many number of female ch- child or daughter will be born to a woman when she completes her reproductive life at a current age specific fertility rate net reproduction ratio means how many number of daughters will be born to a newborn girl child newborn prospective mother means newborn girl child who may go through the mortality figures and the age specific 
hospital to read. Okay. When she completes her reproductive uh, age at the 49 years, how many girl child will be born to her? Okay, so that's a net reproduction ratio. Now we will see some graph on uh, crude death rate and infant mortality rate and life expectancy in Malaysia. Okay. Crude death rate is uh, broken lines on the left side of the graph. Crude death rate. It, uh, it was higher in 1947 and it come down to less than 5. Crude death rate was around 20 at the time of 1947. Then it became less than 5. Okay. Infant mortality rate. It was very high. Huh? It was more than 100 at the time of 1947. Then it came down and it is yeah, around 6 at the time of 2007. So it is coming down. That shows a better, better healthcare system in Malaysia. Crude death rate came down. Infant mortality rate also came down. Now we can look at the right side of the graph. Life expectancy. Okay, in 1970, life expectancy of um, females was slightly higher than 65 and a male it was slightly higher than 61. So slowly it going up. In 1980, it became around Oh, both were around 66 to 70. In 1990, it became around 68 to 74. Then uh, 2000, it became 70 and 75, 74 males and 75 for females. In 2010, it became around 71, 72 for males and 76 for females. So this is an improvement. By looking at demography, we can, we can understand how the healthcare system works in the country. So and now we are finishing the demography and the vital statistics. Okay, these are the references. You can Google up and just look for the textbook. It's available in library also. And you, you can get data from Ministry of Health Malaysia website. Thank you.